What's up guys, it's Vi here and today I'm going to be bringing you the second kind of vlog style answer to your questions that you have about the wild finals. I'm sorry I didn't put out a video yesterday but I really just didn't have the quality of questions that I needed to make a video but now I do so let's go. So the first question then is why did Alex Hitch buy Deathfire's grasp over Zonya's hourglass when he seemed to die really quickly in team fights and that's the game between Gambit and Fnatic. Now the main reason why he did this is just because he wants to split push and DFG gives him CDR and dueling potential if someone came to stop him as well. The CDR with his Lich Bane is going to mean he gets to pick a card more often and so damage to the towers increased substantially. Now the reasoning behind this is that Gambit was so far behind that they really didn't want to fight which is why Alex was trying to push bot and top harder to attract attention. Unfortunately though Fnatic just ignored him and kept showing really hard which meant that Alex was forced to stop split pushing and try and come and team fight. Okay then so the second question actually leads on from the first is it's in the same game and it's I can't work out why Gambit didn't try to contest Dragon. The health bars on Fnatic were relatively low and it seemed like Gambit was in a pretty good position to contest it. So this actually a really good question because it was the first thought that I had as well while this game was actually going on and I did wonder why Gambit wasn't going to contest it but then looking at it really there are two reasons why they didn't contest it. Now the first reason is going to be the state of Fnatic. Obviously their health bars are relatively low but if we look at actually who is low it's going to be Cyanide and Xpeke. Now Xpeke isn't going to get touched in the fight anyway, he's going to be at the back, he's going to be relatively safe, he's going to be protected by his team and he's going to get his ultimate off no matter what. Now the other person who's low is Cyanide and because he's got his passive and his revive it's actually pretty deceptive. He's got about half health now, he'll jump in, they'll take that half health, he'll then revive with half health as well which means actually he's probably got a full health bar for Gambit to shred before he actually goes down. The other thing to note as well is that Fnatic have all their big ticket ultimates available. They didn't use anything in that fight when they were pushing. And so even though they're relatively low, their team fight is stronger than Gambit's anyway. And this is what I wanted to mention with Gambit's team comp. Now Gambit's team comp is a little bit strange with that Twisted Fate. They've got a wombo comp with everyone else, but Twisted Fate doesn't really fit. He's more of a poke champion or an assassin at the back or a split pusher. Now because of this, it means that Fnatic actually has a stronger team fight and they're ahead as well, which is even worse for Gambit. This means that even if Gambit did go in, Fnatic have a stronger team fight and it's not going to matter that their health bars are relatively low, so they would have won that fight. And if Gambit lost that fight, they would have lost another inhibitor. So third and final question then is pretty much about pro's mentality rather than pro play. So it's a little bit different, but it's going to be, can you quickly explain why pro players flash for kills all the time? Then sometimes when I will flash in, they don't. So I'm going to break this question down into three categories. It's going to be knowledge of the game, objectives and positioning. So knowledge of the game is a pretty simple idea. It's just that the pros know their matchups really well. They can read situations really well as well. So they know if flashing is going to be a difference between a kill or not a kill. So objectives kind of leads on from this because in the back of every pro's mind, it's going to be whether I can take the next dragon or whether I can take the next tower after picking up this kill. You often see people save their ultimates to try and get a kill or force people out of lane just before the drake spawns so they can then get that drake uncontested. So a good example that you'll see in the RCS quite a lot is that the mid and jungler will flash onto the enemy mid and pick up a kill and then they'll go and take drake straight away. Obviously two flashes for one kill isn't really worth it but when they throw in the drake it's definitely going to be worth it. Finally positioning, a pro player's positioning is going to be pretty much perfect so they don't need that flash to stay safe. They'll know where the enemy jungler is, they know how to stay safe in lane and so they know how to not die without having their flash. So to answer the second part of the question there are a couple of things you probably need to consider and it's going to be just what happens after the flash. So if I flash in are they going to kill me? Am I going to trade kills and then lose farm and lose a tower? Another example of when they wouldn't flash in is just going to be before a team fight like especially as an AD player you often wait for the AD to have their flash before engaging a fight. When the enemy diver jumps onto you, you're often going to want to flash that, flash CC as well. And so it's a really important tool for you to have in team fights. This means that a pro player is not going to flash for a kill just before a team fight because that one kill may be good for you, maybe give you like 300 gold, but it may mean that you lose that team fight and it's definitely not going to be worth it in that case. So just a quick announcement then regarding a nook. For those of you who don't know what a nook is, it's kind of like Facebook but just for gamers. So your feed will be full of game related stuff like League of Legends posts. It's a great way to find friends to play with as well. Now they've actually undergone a revamp on their website so it's going to be a lot easier for you to kind of find new people, to find friends, to find different gamers and YouTubers to follow as well. So if you're interested in that then please go over and follow the link below. You can sign up, it only takes a couple of minutes to sign up and then you can chat with me as well. I'm quite active on a nook, I do read all my messages so if you want to ask me a question that's a great place to do it. So thanks for watching guys and remember if you have any questions you can inbox me them to my YouTube inbox. Please don't put them in the comments so it's very difficult for me to keep track of hundreds of different comments. As always if you enjoyed this video please do like and subscribe, go like my Facebook, follow me on Twitter and I'll catch you in the next video.